Good evening everyone and welcome back to the action. This is one of the last games from the round of 64 in event 10. And it's between Shane Thompson and Vivek Mack. And uh, I'm joined on comms by Neil Raybone. Evening, Re evening Neil. Hi Nick, you okay? Bit tongue twisted, but <laughs> we'll get there. It's not a good look for a, uh, a commentator who can't get his words out. <laughs> Yeah, all good, thanks. Yeah, um, I've actually not seen much of Vivek all the way throughout this series. He's, um, I think I've maybe commentated on him once. Um, I don't know how much he's played on these uh, these arena tables. Um, they do play differently to the outer tables. They're a little bit quicker. They've got new cloths on them as well. So, and already caught out just fractionally there with um, with the pace. Yeah, very, very responsive, um, as you said, um, can catch you out on, on, the, on the simplest of finishes, really. Um, so, yeah, the start's probably more important for Vivek, the fourth in this match, uh, than Shane. Yeah, he was some way off with that pot. And um, maybe some early nerves. He's getting the better of him. And uh, a very decent chance for Shane it comes to the table all we'll say about Shane he really does have a great cue action really good style about him people talk about you know the best cue actions and Shane's never in the conversation but I think he's up there with some of the best of them it's a really smooth long cue action not quite as long as someone like Chris Melling but he uses a, a really big um, tip like 9.8 mil, something like that it's heading towards 10 millimeters, but um, he manoeuvres that cue ball really well without doing anything too extravagant. Yeah, yeah, he's um, yeah very solid cue action, um, very good under pressure. Um, I think he's he's probably he's slightly overdone that, hasn't he? Nick? I think he wanted more angle so he could drift down the table. Yeah, he's just a touch straight. You may see him try and fizz his off the side cushion with uh, with some side spin. No, he had just had enough there that he could have to play this. I don't know if there is half a pocket. The yellow is hard to see from this angle. The yellow is set towards the right-hand side, so he may have the bottom half of the pocket to squeeze into. I don't think he needs to play a combination shot here. Yeah, the way he's queuing up suggests it does go. Yeah, flies in. Yeah, nice shot. I think Vivek, um, I've not really seen much of Vivek play either, but I think he's like, you know, massively improved though as a player. Um, and um, yeah, obviously he's had a few good runs in the Pairs Cup as well, hasn't he? Yeah, plays with his, plays his, with his dad, his doesn't dad, he? Dad, yeah, yeah, big, yeah, big yeah. back, yeah. Just not sure whether Shane was going for the middle or the corner, but he was kind of between the two of them. Never see much different than that from Shane. A, a front ball break. He's um, got a pretty good, solid break. He didn't quite connect with that one flush. Yeah, but like you say, still a solid break. Um, a lot of power going into the pack. Um, I think he's, yeah, he's obviously you can say he's unlucky not to pot, but yeah, I think he's been a touch fortunate where he's left the cue ball as well because um, Vivek's not really got much to go at here. similar situation for Shane yeah because obviously like, as, as you know obviously we can't you can't play yellow onto red that's why it makes it tricky um, he's obviously got a plant he's probably looking at now but it's, it's, it's not an easy plant good shot yeah nice opener red ball to play. so Eyes come to rest on this end of the table, the red next to the two yellows. That's the one that's going to cause him a bit of a headache. He does have an angle off the ball in the middle now to come down into that. And maybe these two are set as a plant. So, <coughs> yeah, taking advantage of that one. Looks 
Looks like it's been going to be the a third plant in a row. I don't know if anyone's ever gone through an entire <laughs> game planting every ball. <laughs> <laughs> Like you say, yeah, I'll probably look to apply the plant there and he might be able to run down and just nudge the ye nudge the red away from the two yellows. Yeah, half ball contact. Uh, he didn't, he didn't no, he didn't try. Sure. I was going to say a half ball contact on that red would have been the order of the day because he would have he would have left himself on the the other red to middle. He's now looking at that. Yeah, I think he's going to apply the yellow red off the yellow now. But obviously, he's got to be careful where the red goes. That's tied up. Well judged shot. Mm. It's mm, it's okay. It's not great. We might end up seeing yet another plant. Don't know if he, I don't think he can get below the eight ball to pop the one that's closest to the pocket. So, I mean, he can. He doesn't have to play a plant here. He can leave the gap and then navigate around the table to come back out for that. That final red, which is what he's elected to do. Yeah, we could have, like you say, you could pot this red, come, come out, uh, take the last red in the same pocket. We could just, you could just pot and take the red long as well. Played it well. Yeah, really well judged. He's just having a look because he's just the wrong side of perfect, but I think he can just take his medicine here, just screw straight back and take a, a, a half ball cut on the eight ball that's what he's done Scotland v England and Harjeet Singh is playing Mike, Mike Clark so that's a Scotland versus India affair yeah. I think Ryan Davey won the last event didn't he as well or did, did he win the last event? The last challenge event. Should he won a challenge? I can't remember. That, that that may be the case. I can certainly uh, I can certainly find that out. Be that as fortunate to keep the cue ball on the table there. No. Well, that's a bit of luck he needs now to just try and get a foothold into the match. Yeah, Ryan Davy currently sat fourth in the rankings on 9,200 points. Um, he won. Challenger event five. How do he? Yeah. So with the run that he's got, if he wins another one, then he'll be close to challenging for top spot. Connor Treacy currently sat atop the pile. There's a three thousand point lead on everybody. Unlikely to be caught, but uh, Ryan Davies, one player who could do it with a couple of decent runs. Top four there, Connor Treacy, Dave Hogan, Kyle Cope, and Ryan Davey. The top 16 get promotion into the pro ranks. Harjeet Singh has squeezed his way up into 16th place. So, again, there's another player there who'll be looking at, you know, if he can get that, that final, he probably cements his place in the top 16 and, uh, and a pro card for next year. So, all of Shane's balls, apart from the one top right, they're all within about 18 inches of each other. Yeah, he's got to be he's got to be quite um, cute now with his cue ball and, and accurate because he's got to find some gaps here. Yeah, he's more hampered by the fact as well that the eight ball is over the uh, the right pocket, blocking the path for a couple. Interesting to see how he's how he's going to go about this one because what he'd love to do is to be able to play the yellow off eight ball at some point and and try and open up the pocket, but uh, I don't think that's an option. Uh, that's a clever little shot. Maybe able to do that now. Yeah, I think ideally he wants to be on the the, the yellow at the top of the table, so yeah. then he play the yellow off the eight ball. Yeah. Um, you know, like third from home. Um, yeah. He still could probably possibly play now, but he's quite thin, isn't it? And the problem is you probably can't get the pace you want to into it. Yeah, and, and that's why he's played it the way he did. Because um, if you try and play 
yeah, it's hard to get enough pace to push the eight ball and promote the yellow. You're more than likely going to tie the two up. Has he left this one down the cushion? If he has, that's a real bonus. I think it's, it's definitely what he's played for, and it looks like he's on it. You could just see the way the the cue ball revolved there. He just imparted a little bit of side just to bend it around the eight, didn't he, to yeah, help it? Did, yeah, he just turned it over slightly. Yeah, really tidy shot. And obviously at the pace he played it as well, he gave it, gave it every chance to drop, didn't it? Very good clearance. This is well manufactured. This was not a simple table when he came to it. This really is some good form from Shane Thompson. Flawless at the moment. Yeah, looks confident and um, yeah, Bivek. Um, I, I did think that the start was more important for Bivek than Shane. And obviously, he's, he couldn't cast a worse start, could it, for Bivek? another really good connection from Shane but look at this just another dry break there's not much he can do I mean he won't be too frustrated because he's 3-0 ahead but he will be a little bit annoyed at the fact that he can't find a ball uh, that was shown by the look on his face there I mean, it easier to take when you've got three when you're three frames ahead yeah definitely yeah <laughs> Yeah, he's got he's got a ball in probably the most awkward position on the table. The yellow just below the middle pocket. I think it's too far away to just be able to dribble into the middle pocket. So he has to think about whether he's going to take that long or try and develop it. I I think I don't think there's many worse places on the table to have a ball. Yeah, especially if it, I think if it, if it does drop in the middle, it's, it's arguably his last ball. Take the eight yes. ball in the in the, yeah. in the opposite centre, but obviously uh, it's um, yeah. If he can't drop in the middle, then it's um, it's not easy to get on. It's hard to see from here how close it is. Maybe I would have just if he's right behind it. I mean, he's got a ball just below that he can use to land it. So we shall see. Yeah, I think when he potted that ball, just the idea he wants to take the other yellow at the top of the table. Now he's rerouting now. Well, maybe this does go. He's played on it, so... Yeah, it's not too bad if it does, because he can just pot it, run through, take the yellow in the opposite middle, and then the one at the top, and then the last yellow at the, at the bottom, and you fully expect him to get out, really. I think this is a shot, he just needs to run it past the, the eight ball, the cue ball. Oh, flew in. Yeah. No problems there. Yeah, as you say, it should be dot to dot from here. John McAllister, Aaron Davis are now tied up at six each. Sean Story has won the first four against Chris Hampson. This is like a, a must, uh, must win frame for Vivek up early in this match. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> a four-frame lead would be a very tough road back. Yeah, it would be, I think, because, uh, as you know, Shane doesn't really give you any free frames, does he? So, and he's uh, obviously a proven winner, so he's, um, he's going to be tough to peg back. Wow. Is it touching ball? I think, I think it is, you know. Oh no, it is unbelievable. That's the only place. If he's not touching ball, he could probably, he could argue, he's still pot that, couldn't he? Yeah. He's cut it in. Yeah, just shave across. If there's a millimetre between it, he can, he can literally just shave across the ball and, um, and get it. I mean, that couldn't have landed worse. Horrible. I'm having to go. He tried to. Oh, he tried to. Yeah, because it was touching ball, so he's tried to screw back off the red. He cut the black in. <laughs> yeah, ball in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> what a clever shot to see. But 
But ultimately, he's going to let um, let Shane off. I mean, that, he shouldn't have been close to that eight, should he? No, no. Yeah, it was, uh, I think the, obviously the table so reactive, though. You know, he can it, as the you know easy, easy clearances can get away from you because it's so reactive. It's easy to say in hindsight, Neil, but I mean, when he when he took his third last ball and landed on the one to the top right, I was wondering why he hadn't just killed the cue ball, played the one to bottom left, and then top right as his last ball, because the eight ball came down into this bottom left pocket, and it just seemed like the way he was playing it, he's having to manipulate the cue ball up the table, he's going to leave himself a long pot, and he's going to leave himself a long pot back down the table, which he has to control to get on the eight ball. As I say, it's easy to say in hindsight, but it just seemed strange to me at the time. I think as well when he potted the yellow in the middle and he run he run past the eight ball, he, he arguably run a little bit too f too far for him because yeah. he wanted to pull off a little bit more because then when he potted the yellow in the middle, he was running down the table further, so he was further f from the yellow at the top of the table. But you know he should have still cleared off. Shane Thompson marches on though. I'm going to say, um, do you know what? I think I think Rob Warren's just he was firing yesterday, and um, he was involved in a six-red shootout that arguably he shouldn't have won. I mean, Arfan Dad went first. Arfan just made a little error on his last shot, just overran the position of fraction, and I think it cost him three seconds. Um, he would have been 20 seconds, but he got 23. Rob Warren, I didn't think was, you know, I didn't think he was going to get 23. Mm. And he broke off, and the break was, for me, it was a fraction too hard. He wasn't playing his first shot until four seconds. Yeah. But they came out pretty much perfectly. And I'm looking at it, I mean, he just seemed to go the whole, the wrong route all the way around it. And I'm thinking, he can't do this. I saw him afterwards, and he went, I've watched it back, and he said, I've missed so many simple, like, just, just stop shots. Yeah. Um, he said, I don't know how I've done it, but in the moment, you just don't see them. Because I said it's easy for me because I'm watching on TV, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's easy. Anyway, he wins it by a second. Um, and I think from then, you know, he's just, he, he kind of steamrolled everyone from that point on. Yeah. And um, I think, without any disrespect to Deej, I think both of those players will like the fact that they've got their opponent. Mm -hmm. They'll both fancy getting to the final. Yeah. Well, um, Deej played brilliant against me yesterday. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I was completely frozen at the match, like from 2 1. I made an error. And then he's cost me four frames. And the next time I had my hand on the table, it was 6 1. Yeah. Uh, so he can fly as well, to be yeah. honest. But like, that's, I do think they're very similar players. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. They're both really quick. Yeah. They're both fluent players. Mm. Um, I, I, I think that's going to be a really, really good semi final. Um, possibly on paper, you know, you look at the other one and think that's going to be fireworks, but I think that that that, mm. that other half is going to be the better one of the two. Yeah. I think that that really could be a cracker. Um, that's the one I'm looking forward to. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I've just got a feeling that you know, Rob Warren, he's been he kind of knocks on the door. I think both of those players, David and Rob, I mean, they've both been to a final, but. They both just lack that little bit of consistency that you, you kind of get from Phil and Tom and, you know, some of the other players. And um, I've just got a feeling that he, it might be it might be his weekend. Yeah. I mean, whoever goes through against that uh, in in that semi-final is still going to be second favourite. Whoever goes through in the other one. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, just got one of those feelings. Well, Arthur was telling me that um, he's lost two sh he's lost two six red shoes heads to, to Rob now. Another good finish there from Shane. Um, obviously, he'll be hoping for a bit more success. He's not really made any errors, has he, in terms of open play? None. He's just not really getting anything off the break, which might be a little <laughs> bit concerning for him, to be honest. But he's still not. I mean, he's 5 nil ahead. He's not potted a ball off the break. No. Well, hand on the table playing, he's, he's not. he looks good. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think he'll go to the cup break? He doesn't like the cup break, does he? No. <laughs> no. Can't see it happening. It's a shame for Vivek because he's he's not done too much wrong. He's made a couple of couple of small errors. One in the first frame when 
you know, <clears throat> probably just a little bit of early nerves and getting used to the pace of the table. And then that shot um, where he's landed on top of the eight ball and, and got touching ball. Which can be, I mean, yeah, okay, he shouldn't have been near it, but it can be considered a little bit unfortunate because, you know, uh, as we said, if there was a millimetre between those balls, he was absolutely fine. Looks like he's just speeding up a bit now, just, you know, trying to get some rhythm going. It's been a, a, sure. a pretty quick match as well, isn't it? This yeah. is pretty much six frames dusted in 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm not hanging about. Much better. Flowing there. That was nice. It's a hard game when you're not. Cause, yeah, because you, you, you're kind of feeding off your opponent's mistakes. And That's so unlucky. Yeah, very, very unlucky, yeah. Because the, the cue ball was coming up straight at the top of the table. It's got um, kissed into the corner. That's it. You certainly don't need this when you 5-1 uh, down. Uh, Look really at that. It. Just got kicked sideways. You sometimes feel that the pool gods are against you when that kind of thing's happening. They are, because obviously, you know, if he doesn't go in off of there... You know, quite easy, aren't they, really? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Almost certainly going to be 5 2. At least it would have been a bit of pressure on Shane. That John McAllister, Aaron Davis last frame is, is taking forever. They're still playing. Of course, those games are not, um, <coughs> not time games, so they may be in a, a bit of a gritty battle back there. as well you know that, you know like we've had a couple of chances made a couple of errors obviously been a bit unlucky look like landing on top of the eight ball when you're playing a top player like Shane it's it's, it's not impossible but it, it's more or less impossible to come back and win the match because you you just know he's going to get other chances yeah yeah oh look at this he's gone over to the dark side he's <laughs> over for a cut break <laughs> You know it's desperate, st desperate stakes <laughs> when he does this. That's still not good. It's still <laughs> try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. The thing is, I, I wouldn't change personally, a and the reason I wouldn't change is because you mentioned it earlier. He's not hitting them badly. He's just not getting a ball, yeah, and that's just that's just luck. That's just the law of averages. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he just flushed a couple of flushed a couple of. He's just not got one. You keep like. you keep doing that. You're gonna make balls. Yeah. It, it's just it's just as. I mean, I get it. If you're hitting it badly, if you're not timing it, if it's squirting off going into the middle or whatever, then change. Mm. But when you're hitting them well and you're not getting a ball, that's just luck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely hitting them well. There's no real, there's no need to change. At all, really. Um, <laughs> obviously, he could be walking and still didn't get one in. Anyway, so. <laughs> irony, irony. We call that. And uh, Aaron Davis has completed the comeback. He's beaten John McAllister seven frames to six. So he was six for day in that match, was yeah, he? was, yeah. Has he come far enough? I'm not sure he has. And if he hasn't. That's going to make his next shot. Oh, yeah, look at the body language. Yeah, body language suggests he hasn't. And he's straight down on it. He's just, just bending it around the red. Yeah, good. I was going to say, if he, if he had to play the other one, then he had a problem. But he was fine. That's okay. A little bit closer to the middle pocket than he wanted. Yeah, he could have gone. Could have gone straight in or in off the red. But yes, right. um, landed perfect in the end and uh, another good finish. No, did he? It's very unlucky on the last one. So 
sticking with the same break, front ball, middle to middle, straight down the line, yeah, again cued it well. Wow. Oh, there's nothing gone down there. He has got a very good break if you look at it, and obviously that's a clear example of it. Yeah, really good long pullback and just accelerates through the cue ball. I mean, on another day, a couple of balls get kicked in there. Yeah, you, to be honest, you can't really do much more than that, can you? Do you know what I mean? It's just like... It's very unlucky. Very unlucky, yeah. It's a messy table, though. It is a bit of a messy table. Electing for yellows. Yellow balls in play. Yeah, it is a messy, very messy table, actually, yeah. And then probably going to look a pot the yellow that's next to the on the bulk line there and can into the red. But yeah, it's just got a lot to do here, hasn't he? I think he was looking at that. Um, probably just thought he may well just get rid of that stray ball first. I think he'll do the same with this one because this this isn't helping his cause. He doesn't want to come back for for this yellow. And then he can focus on work at the top of the table. This looks a bit long though. He tries to leave an angle to be able to screw back into the yellow and red. It's just come a little bit too far. If he can get to the bottom of the cue ball, he's got a chance. If he, you know he's going to get me to where he just points his his, his tip and take the yellows in the left hand centre pocket. Yeah, he can, and he can, he can just well. get to this right hand side of the cue ball, and, and that's what he where he wants to hit. So just under hit that fraction. Mm. He's struggling now because I, I don't think he can hold for the other yellow. Can he? Can he screw back into the red? Just pinch it and screw back into the red. I think he's just looked if it's a plant into the right middle. Oh, that would help. I think he's looking at that shot I mentioned and just a no, he didn't mean it went long. It was a tough finish that was really, wasn't it, Nick? You know yeah. what to do there. Absolutely. Chris Hampson making a fight back in that other game. It's now six two. He's won two on the bounce. Similar score lines in both of these games now. Thought he would have made the contact, but it's going to be ball in hand. Everything's open. Yeah, he's obviously he's taken the red, like, which he's doing, take the red next to the eight ball because it's a tough shot to get back on that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Could try and screw across now for the other red on the rail. It's a bit short. He's still going to take it. Still taking it, yeah. Look like he pushed that straight into the cushion. Yeah, that, I don't know that's gone in, to be honest. That had no right to go in the pocket. Just gotta just gotta keep going, isn't he? Really like five 0 down and you know, stranger things have happened, haven't they? Yep. Just an example there of how fast the table he's already touched that really and he's like he's landed he's a bit hampered here now. Still fancying to get it though. Oh, 
while Shane will feel that he'd be happy with the scoreline as it is, he'll also feel that he would want to put this game to bed as soon as possible. As long as he's dry breaking, it's going to be a struggle, but Vivek fighting back. Yeah, he's not let his head drop, he's still, still looking positive. Deficit now three. He's going half and half. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the halfway line. It's still going to be a front ball break. There's the break you were looking for, Shane. It's not the split, though. That's what I mean. Like, you know, oh, he's, he's, oh, ar he's oh. arguably some better every other break, but not made a ball. And then he's made two this time. But look at the cluster in the middle. Yeah. Everything's converged. What a mess. Look at this. Where's your opener? No, sir. So he's left him absolutely perfect. to throw away. He can pop the yellow in the middle and go into the cluster of balls. Needs a little bit, little bit of luck to land on what he could possibly stick to the red. But the, the chance is definitely there. There's some strange symmetry between these two games because this one's six three, and now Chris Hampson's six three against Sean Story. They're both making a comeback. He's definitely got to take the shower in the middle. Ooh. That's ugly. Yeah, he threw, he threw wide, didn't it? Because he's hit hard, he's threw wider. Yeah. The problem was, it probably hitting it where he needed to hit it in terms of the white, hitting the red. He'd have to hit it softer and then one got the pace into the pack. Yeah. He doesn't really want to disturb the pack now. He wants um, he wants to leave, so he won't go side cushion. The side cushion much easier connection, but um, he didn't want to go that way because he didn't want to open up everything for Shane. Shane, I'll just probably play the turnover shot now and clip the red and pop the yellow. If he can hit the red fin enough. It's not the end of the world, though, is it? Obviously, he no. tried to pot the yellow ball. It's not. I think, um, just a drop in behind the red. Yeah, just the other snooker at the top of the table made it. I like to see Vivek play a bit, something a bit more, you know, a bit more creative there then. Because yeah. he, um, he's kind of just handed the table over to Shane now, hasn't he, really? Yep. But, you know, he was in a tough spot, really, because it was hard to, like, do anything positive um, as well, really. So it's a tricky situation where, the, where all the balls are in the middle of the table. And Vivek again doing everything to avoid. Breaking up in the pack, coming off two cushions. That's ball in hand. I'm not sure what Shane can do with the ball in hand though. Yeah, I think he'll just, he'll just turn it over. He'll just play the turn over shot and pop the yellow. He can just put the white near the bottom rail and uh, clip the red and pop the yellow in the same shot. He is just looking at the red to middle just to see if it's worth. You know, he could leave an angle there to break open the pack, but uh, I don't think there's, I'm with you, there's no real value in that, in that at the moment. He's looking at playing the snooker at the top of the table, but again, I'm not sure that's really the shot. Yeah, this is the right shot. Yeah. Got it this time. He's not got the cover in, but he's done a pretty decent job. It's 
just t it's just tough for Vivek to play anything positive, isn't it? Because it really is. You know, if he plays anything positive, he's going to open Shane's yeah. reds up in the middle of the table. I think that's exactly what Shane's going to do here. He's got the angle, one cushion into the pack, break everything open. Played it at a lovely controlled pace. Yeah, I like that shot because you know he's not he's not crashed into it. He's tried to play a proper shot. Yeah. Yep. I wonder if that red at the top goes into the middle. If it does, he's in. Yeah, if it does, it's a really good shot. That is, if you're straight, if you're straight on this red, he can just top it through. Yeah, he was just holding up his hand, asking it to hold up. I think it has just gone a fraction further than he wanted, but he, he's still okay. Yeah, it's just off straight, but he can still get through. Push you off the eight. Yeah, it just shows what a great developing shot that was. A lot of players, a lot of club players, would think a crash bang wallop there yeah. just to get them wide open, but. That lovely little controlled stroke that he played, it just it opened them up enough. That's a sign of a classy player when they're playing, you know, shots like that. Uh, really well judged cannon as well. If they can pot this to bottom left. A bit of a look on his face, but I'm pretty sure he can pot this and check it off the bottom cushion. Sometimes though, because the clock it doesn't take. Yeah. Delightful. Shane Thompson finally finds the groove and gets across the line. Yeah, I think he's played he's played well, isn't he? Nick? Yep. You know, he's just obviously he's been a bit unfortunate with his break, but in terms of open play, he's played um, very solid. He definitely has. Yeah, and uh, good stuff from him and um, Vivek Mack. It's uh, exit. Stage left for him, but uh, we'll see him again next season back in the pro ranks.